Hi, in this video I'd like to show some enhancements to Illuminated Cloud's uh, metadata subscription management capabilities and also a performance optimization in how Illuminated Cloud enumerates metadata from its connected organizations. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start with a metadata format uh, project. This is a project that stores its uh, files uh, in the same way that, uh, that projects were stored prior to Salesforce DX. So metadata format versus source format. I'll actually show a source format project uh, after this. And so I'm going to open the, uh, the subscription editor. And uh, as always, you'll see the, the three options that are available selected. And if you're not familiar, it's basically uh, a, an Illuminated Cloud specific concept that allows you to uh, point and click uh, choose your metadata subscription, check and uncheck the things you want to include. And of course, based upon what you uh, select here, that will act as an effective filter for uh, the way that Illuminated Cloud uh, deploys metadata to the organization, retrieves metadata from the organization, uh, and, and, and effectively creates the working set for the project. Um, Similarly, you could use a package XML file, which is a more traditional mechanism used uh, uh, not only by Illuminated Cloud, but uh, by the command line tools, by CI CD systems, by the Salesforce DX tooling. It is the standard way to express uh, the subset of metadata that you care about from an organization for a particular uh, uh, action. And so you could choose a package XML file. Um, and then there is actually another option that you could have chosen in one of these metadata format projects, which is all slash package. And it's really two different uh, meanings. Uh, if it's all, then it means all the metadata in the organization. And I actually discourage the use of that because there are some bugs around certain metadata types and certain metadata objects that cause them to gack or create internal server errors when you uh, retrieve or deploy them. And you end up having to come back to a more selective metadata subscription. But the other side of that package allows you to uh, to specify a development package and uh, and filter through it. And this is something that uh, those that are developing uh, managed packages, primarily first generation managed packages, uh, would do in order to use the development package as an effective filter. Um, but uh, most people are either going to be using a package XML file, especially if they're uh, using that file in tools outside of Illuminated Cloud, CI CD systems, command line builds, things like that, or a selective metadata subscription. The WYSIWYG editor, the point and click editor, has uh, traditionally only been uh, allowed for selected metadata subscriptions, but the first thing I want to show is that it actually now works for package XML based subscriptions. So for example, uh, I have a package XML file open behind this, and if we just subscribe to a new metadata type and I hit apply, you can see that Illuminated Cloud has added that. If I uncheck that, you can see that Illuminated Cloud has removed it. If I uncheck abandoned shopping cart remover, you can see that it's removed that. So it basically is the exact same mechanism for managing the contents of your package XML file, except now you're able to do it point and click. Um, there have always been uh, ways that Illuminated Cloud could help you with this. So for example, if I removed uh, abandoned shopping cart remover here and uh, went to the add to metadata subscription action, uh, Illuminated Cloud would uh, actually find metadata that you don't have in your subscription, whether it's package XML or selected, uh, but that you do have in the selected files and would prompt to add them. Uh, similarly, as you add and remove files in the project, uh, if so configured, it can add and remove entries in the corresponding metadata subscription. But again, now you're able to go in and pretty much change things in a point and click fashion. Um, one thing that I do want to point out is if I change back to uh, the IML file. Now this is, is a little bit more of a power user uh, aspect, but these are files that are uh, native to the JetBrains IDE where module specific configuration is stored, but it's where Illuminated Cloud stores its subscription information. Uh, so you can see here it's saying this is a package XML subscription using this package XML file. Uh, traditionally, if you had ever uh, used selected and refresh metadata from the server, uh, this could get to be a very large file. Well, now Illuminated Cloud is going to try to keep this as compact as possible based on the metadata subscription. So because you don't uh, actually uh, have a selected subscription, uh, it's not going to show uh, any metadata from the organization here. If I change to a selected subscription, uh, it will now show only the items that I am subscribed to. So for example, I'm going to scroll up a little bit here so you can see this happen. If I go back over here and I wildcard Apex class, uh, you can see that that changes to 
a wild card here. So that's actually wild carded that type. If I instead uh, get rid of one of these, say Apex stock example and hit OK, it will blow those out explicitly, but it will not include things that you're not subscribed to anymore. The main reason that I bring this up is because those that have checked the IML files into version control uh, after editing their subscription the first time may see a significant change to their IML file. It's expected, it's actually uh, valid and, and desired because it, it, it keeps this file as compact and as uh, focused as possible. Um, so I've been showing all this in the context of a metadata format project, as I said, and now we'll switch over to a source format project. So this is a project working against a Salesforce DX connection to a non-scratch org. And by necessity, it's going to use a package XML file for its metadata subscription under manifest package XML. There's no capability to switch to the other subscription types. Um, but again, uh, and the package XML file is open behind here. As I make changes, you can see the Illuminated Cloud is actually updating the package XML file. If I get rid of, uh, again, abandoned shopping cart remover, you can see that it removes that entry. If I add it back, you can see that it adds it. Another thing that's worth pointing out is that this particular package XML file contains XML comments. Uh, those may be elements that I've uh, commented out and uh, I might uh, bring them back in later. They may be annotations about things that I should and shouldn't be doing within this file or explanations of why I'm doing something. Uh, previously, Illuminated Cloud would round trip package XML files and it would uh, lose the, uh, the comments. Uh, this is no longer the case. It uh, now retains the comments and uh, tries to keep them anchored to the original elements, even if things move around because, for example, it is sorting elements for you. So uh, you can certainly annotate your package XML files. You can comment out blocks and keep those in there and still use these point and click capabilities uh, that Illuminated Cloud is offering for managing your package XML files. Another thing that I want to show is some, uh, some additional view management capabilities that have been added. So uh, you may have already seen these new toolbar buttons, and they are exactly what they look like. Uh, you can now uh, collapse uh, the entire tree, expand everything in the tree, expand only the things you care about, the things that are selected. Uh, you can check and uncheck all if you want, uh, probably less frequently used uh, because they're kind of a hammer. You really want to be more selective in your uh, metadata subscription, but you can if you want. Um, but these capabilities have been added. Uh, of course, there are key bindings for the expand and select capabilities. Um, those have also been added to the build options dialog. So the, the dialog that's presented when you do uh, uh, retrieval, bulk retrieval, bulk deployment, bulk uh, uh, delete. And so you'll see the exact same uh, capabilities here. Now, uh, select all and deselect all are only enabled when you're in a uh, custom selection. And one of the things you'll notice is that when I switch to a custom selection, it retains the previous selection. If I came straight into the dialog in a previously done custom, uh, it would uh, restore the, the previous uh, custom selection. But this is very handy, for example, if I go over here and say, I just want to retrieve documents, and I'm going to start with context. Uh, so retrieve metadata, and I start with just documents, and I want to basically uncheck just one of these. I can switch to custom. It'll be the exact same selection, but now I can uncheck one of them. Uh, it keeps you in context, and in fact, that's the case across the board. If I uh, expand all, sorry, expand all, and scroll down a little bit and tell it that I want to uh, show uh, subscribed only or, or stop filtering by subscribed only and uh, say select case here and then switch to module, it will actually keep you in the same place. It just changes the, uh, the interaction model to be based on module. If I uncheck subscribed only, it'll try to keep me in the same place. Notice some things are filtered. I'm sorry, if I check it again, it will try to keep me in the same place. So effectively, it tries to keep you in context of where you were as you switch back and forth. Uh, this is something that it didn't do previously. It would reset the tree. Uh, it frustrated me. I'm sure it frustrated others. So now it should actually keep you in context as you change the view uh, in either this or the module subscription editor. Uh, next to last thing that I want to show is, uh, is this, moving over to the uh, back to the metadata format uh, project where we actually had the other subscription types is if I switch to all slash package, it will actually update to reflect what that would be. Now, as you can see, it's a read only tree. I can't change the check boxes, but it does show what effectively I have in my metadata subscription. If I filter by a development package and it will need to reset this and switch to all package. Notice now it erases the tree and says that the subscription is based on the selected package. Um, that is because there is no API for enumerating the contents of development package. And rather than be misleading and try to sh show some tree that may not be accurate, it just shows you this message. If uh, instead we uh, switch back to 
um, no package and come back. Notice it'll go back to the standard all package, uh, the, I'm sorry, all metadata subscription that shows everything. And now we'll switch back to package XML. So now I want to show one more thing, and it's basically the, uh, the performance optimization that I alluded to at the beginning of this uh, with regard to how Illuminated Cloud enumerates metadata from the connected organization. So uh, I'm going to open back up the, uh, the build options dialog. I'm just going to switch back over to where it shows metadata. And uh, you may have already noticed this label at the bottom, using cache metadata for this connection. Uh, from the date on which that cache was populated, date and time. If I switch to a, another uh, connection, it will show uh, that it's using cache metadata from that connection, and it'll show the date and time on which that one was populated. So five days before the project's default uh, project, the project's default connection. Uh, if I switch back, of course, it's going to switch back to this particular cache of metadata. If I open up the module subscription editor, one thing we'll see is that it's using the exact same cached information. It's a shared cache everywhere within Illuminated Cloud. It's populated the first time that Illuminated Cloud needs to enumer enumerate that metadata. It is not ever populated again until you specifically tell the IDE that you want to refresh metadata uh, for that particular connection. So for example, if I know that a user uh, has added a field uh, to this organization, or maybe I have by going into the declarative tools, and uh, I want to include that field or whatever the metadata is in my metadata subscription, uh, I can just click the refresh uh, action here, and it will refresh the metadata from the organization. It will update the timestamp. So we'll see here in just a moment that it'll say it's about uh, 20, 30 minutes later than it was. It's a slightly newer version of it. Uh, if I click OK, notice this one still says 456. If I click OK, it's updated to use that uh, version of the cache. Um, and I would now see uh, the new metadata here, uh, especially if I'd added it to my metadata subscription there. Uh, I can also refresh it from here if I want. So uh, those are the two places where you can force Illuminated Cloud to uh, re-query the server to enumerate metadata for a specific connection. Um, the only exception to this in terms of when Illum Illuminated Cloud will automatically enumerate metadata is it will enumerate a subset of metadata for things where the latest and greatest version of it is critical. Conflict detection, where you want to make sure that you have the latest version of the last modified time for metadata to make sure that you're not going to override it. Uh, incremental deployment when you do deploy modified metadata, the exact same thing. But otherwise, it's going to work against this cache. And it's a per connection cache. It is stored on that machine. Uh, in general, it's not portable across machines. Um, uh, it's intended to be only on that machine, and then if you uh, are using Illuminated Cloud on another machine, then it'll build out its own cache. But uh, it should absolutely minimize uh, the frequency of Illuminated Cloud uh, querying and enumerating metadata from the organization. Uh, the metadata, metadata definitions, to be clear, not the metadata contents, but just the list of metadata by type. So those are the enhancements uh, in 2.1.2.0 and, and going forward around uh, uh, metadata subscription management, some usability enhancements in both the metadata subscription editor and the build options dialog, and of course, a nice performance optimization in how Illuminated Cloud lists metadata from the connected organizations. I hope you find it useful. I hope you find it to... Uh, to increase your productivity or be or make the uh, the application easier to use. If you find any issues, I say this every time, but if you find any issues, let me know about them. I'll address them as quickly as possible. And um, otherwise, I hope everyone's staying safe and staying healthy out there. And uh, thank you very much for your time.